Now, what about the U.S. deficit and GDP? So the amount of debt, how short is the government on their obligations they have to pay versus the amount of revenue they bring in and the GDP, the gross domestic product? So what we can see is that long-term interest rates are rising fast and the deficit to GDP is increasing. So long-term rates are increasing. So that means the, uh, the, the interest rate on the bonds, so you have the yield curve, right? So you have the short end of the, of the yield curve, which is you know a two-year, five-year, 10-year. Then you have the long end of the curve, which is a 30-year. And that measures the amount of risk or the sentiment of where investors think the market will be in the future. And what we can see based off of the fiscal deficits and the interest rates, we can see that it is spiking right here in the red line right here. Is, this is the change in the fiscal deficit to GDP. So, so the percentage, deficit to GDP in, in percentage terms during all recessions going back to the 1970s. I like to look from 1970s forward because that's when we got off the gold standard. So that data is a little bit more relevant. So what we can see here is this is the COVID recession that we're in right now. And you can see how high it's still spiking right here at the end. If we go back here, this is the SNL crisis in the 80s. If we want to go back to the great, or I'm sorry, this is the, the GFC, the global financial crash right here. So you can see that. But you can see that the change in the fiscal deficit, the government's ability to continue to pay for the entitlements things have to pay, is in a serious, serious situation. And then um, the question that I think everybody wants to know is, when will the Fed pivot? Well, first of all, um, I haven't been to AA, but you know, I hear all the time, like uh, admitting you have a problem is like the first step. So if the Fed won't even admit it, Cardi B calls out and says, when y'all gonna call, set the call at a recession, Janet Yellen says, I'm not going to announce it and we're not having a recession. So the first step would be, hey, shoot, we have a problem, we should do something about it, but they're not there yet. So when's the Fed gonna pivot? Well, not until they probably admit they have a problem, all right? But what are they looking at? We want to try to remember, have leading indicators. What are they looking at? When will they need to act? Well, it's actually not that hard, all right? Let me show you a couple things. So the first thing is you have to understand what is the Fed doing? They have a job by Congress. They have something called a dual mandate. There's two things they're responsible for, two things. And so if they're not doing those two things good, then they need to fix them. So what are they? Well, let's take a look at that. So the dual mandate, first of all, in 1977, Congress amended the Federal Reserve Act, stating the monetary policy objectives of the Federal Reserve as, so this is their policies maintain long-run growth of the monetary and credit aggregates, so maintain long-term growth of credit and money, all right? Increase production, make sure the economy is growing, GDP is growing, which I just showed you two quarters going down, so that's not happening. Um, so as to promote effectively the goals of, okay, here's where we get the dual mandate, the goals of what? Maximum employment, stable and stable prices. Maximum employment, and stable prices. Those are the two objectives. And moderate long-term interest rates, that's kind of like a third one, stable prices, interest rates, they kind of go together. So those are the two things that they're responsible for, maximum employment and stable prices. So that's what they have their eye on. So we should also have our eye on those two things. So let's take a look at that. We want to watch those two things. What we can see here, stable prices. So this is CPI, Consumer Price Index. And as we can see right here, you know, for the last, this is 2007, prices have been pretty stable. This line right here is two and a half percent. All right, you know 2% is the number, I'm gonna show you that in a minute. About two and a half percent, the prices sit right about there. This whole section, we are right on the number. This whole section, we're right on the number. But look at this. Does that look like stable prices? Does that look like they're following their mandate? Well, to me, it certainly doesn't. And it's not just what I think, it's what they're telling us. Now this part, I would believe them on. Well, I don't believe them 100%. Jay Powell from the Fed says they're strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to 2%. This is as of a couple days ago, June 22nd. So they're firmly committed to getting back to 2%, but 2%, they're at almost 9% today. So prices are certainly not stable, so they need to bring them back down. So we're watching that. I don't think they're gonna be pivoting until they're starting to get prices back down to close to their mandate of stable prices. What else? 
Well, we also want to be watching unemployment. If we see unemployment starting to jack up, that's going to be a problem. Now, we're not seeing it 100% in this chart for a couple reasons. One, the way they calculate this is highly manipulated, sort of like CPI. But as I already showed you in the other chart, looking at the part-time employment, we can see how that's spiking, which is more of a leading indicator than this. This would be more of a lagging indicator, but we're watching both of those numbers. This is what the Fed is going to pivot on. So if they can start getting prices back down to be more stable, uh, or unemployment starts getting away, that would cause them to want to pivot. The other thing is we want to watch credit liquidity. They want to make sure the banking system works. Ultimately, the Fed's there to backstop the banks. They don't want the banks to crash. And so the credit markets are important to them. They want to make sure they're working. That's what happened in 2008. The banking system froze up. And so the credit markets signal caution as US spread surge past key levels. So right now they're in caution. They're surging past key levels. You can see this, this is investment grade credit risk premiums. And so we can see that they are breaking out of this level right here. And that means danger. So those are things that we're watching for. And I believe the Fed will pivot when those things force them to. So now that we know that, now that we know they're lying to us, um, or they're so incompetent they don't know, or they're lying. You tell me in the comment down below. Um, we know that everything they tell us is wrong. We have to get our own data, which I've given to you. What does that mean? Remember, I said this isn't all gloom, gloom and doom. We just have to have the right information so we can act accordingly, we can act properly. So what do we do to prepare? All right, so remember, no such thing as good and bad timing, good and bad strategies. So I've been talking about since the end of last year, there's been a massive rotation in the market from growth, high growth, tech, into real things, commodities, energy, metals, things like that. All right, I've, I've been talking about for a long time, when they continue to print an endless amount of fake counterfeit fiat money, people wanna buy real hard things. Turns out we still need things like food and fertilizer and energy. Who would have thought we still need those things? So the market's just moving. There's a lot of money to be made just in other assets than you might have been looking at. The other thing is that we also want to be hedging positions. Now, hedge funds get their name from hedging positions. So if you're really long, let's say that you have money tied up in your managed accounts, your 401ks, and you're long on a bunch of things, you can't really touch that, you could hedge that. You can easily put a couple shorts on the indexes with just one click. You don't really have to go borrow the money. Super easy. You can hedge your position so when the market goes down, you make money. The other thing that I'm really doing is I'm adding more dry gunpowder. I believe that the markets will continue going down per the data, and I want to be ready to scoop these assets up when they go on sale. So my percentage of cash that I'm holding is larger than normal, and I'm actively growing that. So I've been selling some of my assets in, in uh, sectors that are rotating out of, putting that into cash. All right. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. These are the three things that I'm doing. And uh, I've already gone long on this video, so I'm not going to break it down even more. But you can join me next week if you want. We'll go live. I got a whole bunch more charts I'm going to show you. I'll dig more into the sector rotations. We'll look at actual assets I'm buying and selling. You can ask me all the live questions that you want. There's a link down below. And that's what I got.